There's something out there waiting for us. It ain't no man. We're all gonna die. Hey folks, this is the Nutty Knife Guy. Bringing you today the Bigfoot Bowie Knife. Another budget blade. Well, I think I've said this before, but I'm going to go over it again. I'm going to do a lot of budget blades. Not because I don't buy more expensive knives. I do. But I think I'm doing a more service to the knife people out there doing the budget knives, or the potential knife people. I think might want to see more budget knives. Because if Cold Steel comes out with something, if Ontario comes out with something, Benchmade, CRKT, Condor, any of the really well-respected knife makers out there, they're well-respected for a reason. Chances are it's going to be a decent, if you get something from them, it's going to be a good knife. Now, there might be uh, individual attributes of knives that people, some people like and some people don't, so that makes them worth reviewing. But by and large, when it comes to quality, those companies and others like them are going to be decent. The quality is going to be good. But if you're new to a knife, if you're not a knife person and you just want a knife for a specific application, you might want to go budget. Or if you're new to the knife, uh, scene and you're a new knife collector or a new knife guy, knife person, you might want to hear more about the budgets. Not that I won't do more expensive knives. I will do more expensive knives, but I will be doing a lot of budgets. And having said that, we have a budget blade here. This massive piece of steel uh, is was it cost less than $20. It was a little over $20 with tax. And we're going to be looking at that from that price range. Uh, so this is uh, 21 inches overall, I believe. Uh, actually, I don't have the specs. Uh, I'll edit in a card or something like that. But you, you can see, this is a big, big knife. Uh, so... Uh, budget knife, and I'm going to go through what I like about it before what I don't like about it. First of all, this thing is fun. I'm going to back off from the camera a little bit here. <clears throat> I mean, you can swing this thing, and it's got really good balance. It's got a weight in the handle. But it's not as heavy as it looks because the blade is thinner than you would expect uh, from a knife this size. But it is nice. It, it, uh, doesn't move around in the hand. It's got a uh, it's got a shape so it doesn't slip too much. Uh, as near as I can tell, the pommel bolster and the handguard are brass. The handguard really works. It's got a choil here. I haven't really tried to use this thing. I'm going to take it out and I'll show you. It's got a choil here, so you might be able to do a little bit of fine work. But this is a huge knife. I mean. Uh, this is not going to be something you're going to be whittling fine work with. Um, fit and finish. Again, for a budget knife, it's pretty decent. It's got it does have a few minor issues, and one major issue. And the major issue is, I'll get it right up on the camera. I think you can see. The blade roll here, the edge roll. At least I hope you can. Yeah, you can see where the tip had some damage, and it came that way out of the box. Like I said, I haven't tried to use this thing at all. And I don't think it happened during shipping because it had a tip protector on it. But the tip protector doesn't really fit the knife. You will see, I hope you can see, yeah. The tip protector is itself damaged. And that's the way it came. Uh, and the tip protector wasn't on it. The tip protector was kind of on it like this. It didn't really fit. And I think to try and make it fit, they did that with it. So they had to split the top. So that tells me that this probably happened in the factory. Whoever put the tip protector on it couldn't possibly have not noticed that the tip was bent, so they shipped it that way. Uh, 
I don't know. This is made in Pakistan. I don't know exactly what factory made it. But another uh, otherwise very nice blade. I mean, there's no scratches or anything on it. There's just, I don't care if it is a budget knife. There's no excuse for shipping a knife like that. Uh, and I left it that way uh, so far to show my uh, audience, all 22 of you. Um, you know, hey, if you're watching this for the first time, you like knives, maybe you don't think I'm so knowledgeable at knives, knives but maybe I make you laugh. I don't know. But, if, you know, I, if, you're, if, you're, if you feel the urge, or if you feel the feel a little love, like, share, and subscribe. Okay, now, other fit and finish issues. There actually aren't many. Uh, the it is full tang, and the tang is ground nice and flush with the handle scales, which uh, a lot of budget blades don't do that. Uh, everything's really tight. There are no gaps that I can see. Uh, one issue is the scales are slightly uneven and the bolsters, uh, I do see a gap now that I'm looking at it, but the bolsters are just a little bit uneven, you can see. And Donnie B. All Day reviewed that on his night, uh, reviewed this kind of knife on uh, his channel, and it had the same issue. Now, looking at it now, it does have some putty or something filling in a gap between the bolster and the tang. But it's a $20 knife, for a sub-$20 knife, actually. So I'm not going to be too concerned about that. But this really annoyed me. I almost sent it back to Amazon. But then I'm thinking sub-$20 knife, and uh, I would show you guys. Now, this is probably a pretty nice example, and this, of course, is probably just on this knife. It might not happen to yours. But if you decide to get one. But it does give me some pause about the manufacturer and quality control, even though it's sub twenty dollars, that this got shipped to a customer. Now that combat ready knife I did last week, the combat ready sub hilt fighter, had some issues with it, but it didn't have any quality control issues like that and neither do my ridge runner neither did my ridge runners or my timberwolves which are budget brands that are usually pretty good so uh as it stands now am i sorry i bought the knife not for twenty dollars the reason i bought it is this tip design i guess people are actually calling this the predator point because there were some of these knives on the 1987 movie uh, Predator, which I quoted from at the beginning of my uh, presentation here. Use knives with tips like this. In particular, the American Indian Scout Billy had a knife like this. And it was him I was quoting. It was from a different scene. He didn't have a knife, but it was a cool quote. And I thought it made people chuckle. So that, that's why I bought it. Now, the thing with it is, I'm not really crazy about the aesthetics of this, but I didn't have a Predator tip in my collection. This was cheap, and Donnie B. All Day recommended it as a good budget knife. So I picked it up. And that's pretty much you know, my first impressions of the knife itself. This is very, very annoying. But a couple of minutes with the file, and it's fixable. Shouldn't have shipped that way, but it's not throw thing worth going to all the hoopla to ship it back. Now, the really big problem with this knife is this horrible, god awful, subpar sheath. Uh, they really, uh, in the marketing of this, the advertisement, they really need leather with leather sheath. Well, it is leather, but I suspect that they go get scrap leather from somewhere where they make good leather products to make this thing. Uh, extremely thin leather. 
very hard. I mean, it, this, it's actually rough. You can you can actually hear it. Rough on the edges. Only single stitched. Uh, belt loop would barely fit in most belts. And it's got this pretty cheap rivet holding everything. The rivet and the rivet's holding everything together. I mean, it is a sheath in the sense that the knife fits in it. Uh, you do have to have the retention strap on for it to hold the knife. The retention strap is like really, really, the snap is really, really stiff. Um, there is a gap between the guard and the sheath right here. That's not good. All in all, I think that if you actually took this out on a camping trip, uh, the knife would probably make it okay. I think the sheath would fall apart in about 20 minutes. Now, you get really cheap sheaths with budget knives. But in this case, they should have just give you a nylon, uh, you know, one of the budget basic nylon sheaths like you get with a lot of, bu a lot of budget blades that are, are adequate and will le at least last a while. They call this a leather sheath and it's like that's supposed to be a big selling point here that it's a crappy, crappy leather sheath. So uh, we're going to take it out to the war post here pretty soon. Do some chopping. Maybe swing it around a little more. Uh, now I didn't sharpen it and I'm going to try and do a bottle cut. It came okay sharp. I don't know how it's going to do in a bottle cut. So we'll have to see about that. Uh, I'm not expecting to break this knife, but it is mystery steel. They just say stainless steel blade, like a lot of budget blades. Uh, it seems decent, but it does have this edge roll. I mean, this tip roll. So I am not going to be too surprised if I break it, if I don't grate. If I'm not, I'm out 20 bucks. So uh, I'm going to go out to the door post. Now the thing is this, my barely adequate camera that with the crappy sound and everything that I have been using to film outside, completely quit. I went to turn it on, battery was charged and everything, and it just won't come on. I took the batteries out and all this other stuff, and it didn't work. So the outdoor stuff is just going to be filmed on my cell phone. Uh, and my cell phone is not exactly state-of-the-art. But I wanted to get the video in while I have weather, because we got good weather out today, and it's supposed to turn crappy tomorrow. It's Ohio. So, uh, that's about it. See you at the war post. Okay, folks, I'm using my camera, and I'm using the uh, forward-facing camera, so I can't see my screen as I'm talking to you, but I think I have everything in frame. Uh, we had a lot of wind out here, so I'm using a different angle. I had to put the camera someplace where the wind can't get to it quite as much. As a matter of fact, I'm going to move it back just a little bit, I think. Get more out of the wind. Uh, I'm going to start with the bottle cut. 
this is a vinegar bottle, so it's a bit. Remember what I said about the really sh stiff snap? Uh, it's a vinegar bottle, so it's got it's thicker than the average bottle, and I have not sharpened this, so we'll see how that goes. Then we'll do the warp post. I'm gonna go around the other side, make sure you're still in the frame. Okay, it looks like you're still in frame. Can't hard, it's hard to see the screen outside. did get through the bottle because when I squeezed it to look at the other one it squirted but uh, I mean this would create one hell of a wound as it is but it's not coming out of the box shaving sharp I'm gonna do one more whack on the bottle we would have gone right on through it. Uh, this cut was more about weight than the blade, but it's that kind of knife. Let's see how she does with the war post. Now remember when I do the thrusts on the war post, this had damage already. One more frame check. All right, looks like you saw all of that. Going to adjust it over just a little bit, though. Okay, I'm just going to try. I'm just going to try some solid, determined chops. Again, remember, it had damage on the clip already. I'm not seeing any damage to the edge, and the tip damage didn't get any worse. 
and you can't tell probably from the war post because I've already you know, I use this for practice and testing knives all the time so you can't tell one chop from another but this was actually biting really deep so I'm gonna see how this does for fine work I mean it's just a huge knife here it really it's not really not meant for that but we're here okay this is the stick I've been using for this for the videos we don't have a lot of stray sticks for lying line around right now this is the vampire determined I made with the combat, with the combat uh, ready knife last week got a lot of wind here Some barks are, but if I did sharpen it, I think you could probably feather stick with it. Right now you can't, because I wanted to test it as it came. Uh, but, I mean, it's not great. I might do an update, get it sharpened, and fix this edge roll, and see what happens with it then. But it's right now, it's not going to be, I'm not going to be able to part with it, because it is tall. But the thing about it is, this thing is so big beat somebody and have and it's heavy enough you could beat somebody to death with it if you had to I mean not somebody a lizard zombie man ninja all right but as I was saying before it just feels good to wield now you swing something around this long enough and you're gonna start feeling your wrist and shoulder but this is just fun. So, there you have it. I'll meet you back down in the basement for the recap. Okay, folks, we're back in my resistance bunker, and this is the target bottle. Um, now, the first cut is a diagonal one here, and at first I thought it was just a scratch. And it's not a very deep cut, and as a matter of fact, it's just in part, I can't even push it so it will come in. But it did squirt. I don't know if you can see that on the video or not. Uh, and this is a really hard part of the bottle. The top is, is, is pretty stiff and rigid. Uh, but one cut really did make an impact and like I said this is useful sharp for a knife this size it wouldn't have been useful on a, a knife that didn't have so much weight in the blade but this would have been a real day ruiner on a, the arm of a lizard man zombie ninja uh, then we have one here, then again, again it just barely penetrated enough for water to escape. But a thick bottle, basically a semi-sharp or a semi-dull knife, how you, depending on how you want to look at it. So there's that. Now I'm really tempted to put a good edge on this thing and repeat the test. If I do, I'll film it and I'll do something really short and just do an update on this video. Um, now, of course, the, the tip roll was bothersome, but after jamming it into that wood uh, several times, pretty hard, it didn't get any worse. And there's no edge, edge damage. Now, this has a... I think I feel a pretty shallow hollow grind. Maybe not this. That might actually be a saber grind. Now, if I sharpen the tip, it will, of course, make it thinner. I mean, sharpen the edge, it will, of course, make it thinner. 
and maybe they would get some edge damage. So again, I might do a revisit. But can I recommend the knife? Yes, within limitations. It's a pretty decent looking collector's piece if you don't inspect it too carefully. And even then, there are just a few pretty tiny issues that non-knife people probably wouldn't even notice. It, uh, after banging it around like that, everything is still tight. Uh, if you train some form of etched weapon martial art or just a knife fighting system that involves really large knives, this is another one that almost qualifies as a sword, just in length. It's not quite long enough to be a sword, but not, but too long to be a knife. My classification for this is a swife. Uh, if you're something like this, uh, or right, you could probably do you know brush clearing with this. Almost use it like a machete. Uh, I would imagine if you hunt something like wild boar and you might need a, a big old knife in case you miss and the, you know, the boar gets close to you or you just need to finish and do a, uh, you go in and finish it off a coup de gras. Uh, you know, do you really need something really expensive to do that? Probably not. And something like this will probably do it. Would I recommend this for serious bushcrafting or any kind of survival or long distance hiking where uh, your comfort or even your personal safety would absolutely depend on this thing? I doubt it. I'm not really. I mean, as a personal protection knife, yeah, I mean, you're on the, you know, you're hiking and everything and a bear attacks you or Bigfoot or lizards, zombie man ninjas, or cougars, or, you know, you know, a psychotic rabbit. Yeah, I mean, it's going to do the job. You know, when it comes to fighting knives, and they don't have to be as durable as a bushcraft knife or even a camp knife. Human beings are pretty fragile things, and if all you need to do is do harm to a human being who is attacking you, who is attacking you? Who is attacking you? I want to make that clear. I'm not saying go out there and use this on a human being, unless your life is in mortal danger from another human being. But they don't have to be that durable, because the human body isn't that durable. And if that's all you're going to use it for, yeah, I mean, you can use any kind of knife for that, right? Some are better than others, but you know, in a pinch, it it just you know it doesn't you don't have to be able to baton it through you know. An oak, yeah. uh, an oak uh, log. So, I will recommend this with reservations. One, remember that the quality and control here is from you know the, where they make these is, is probably pretty spotty. Um, the sheath is substandard even for budget knives. But the blade itself, it could be a lot of fun. It's a nice little conversation piece. You know, it's one, it's one of these things you just want to show people out to where they can go, ooh, ah, and maybe run away in terror. This will work. So if it was anything more than what I paid for it, I think the whole, I think this was actually 17 something before tax and all that. Not exactly sure. Um, I got this through Amazon, but it's from Bud K. I purchased it from Bud K through Amazon simply because you can get it from Bud K. If you get it from Amazon, the shipping is way less than you get it directly from Bud K. But it's definitely from Bud K because it came with a Bud K catalog in the box. So uh, if it was anything more expensive, no, I would not recommend it. And I will recommend it just if the people who... Uh, are just into the really almost this is almost like a, a fantasy blade 
uh, you know, as a movie blade. If you're into something this big and everything like that, and you're not really going to use it for anything but more of a like brush clearing, light brush clearing around the house or the farm or wherever, and you're not going to be in some kind of jeopardy of extreme discomfort you know, because you, you know, because you can't do whittling with it, you know, you can't do any carving with it, or it breaks and you don't have anything to process your firewood or whatever. Uh, no, but light brush clearing or just that, just one of those knives to have in a collection. Yeah, the the blade itself is decent, but the sheath is just awful. Now, as a light camp knife or a trail knife, probably. Uh, I think you could get away with it, but the, uh, except for the sheath. So a twenty dollar budget knife, yeah. If you know this is something that strikes your fancy, you're not gonna. You're not going to be sorry about it. That being said, I will leave you with my usual admonishment to draw your knives only in just purpose and sheathe them only with honor. And remember, without knives, life would be dull and pointless. And this one is going to be pointy pretty much as soon as I get off camera here. Please, if you like the content, or you just think I'm funny, or you just have an urge to click something, click like, click share, click subscribe, make me happy. I will see you next time.